Hello, my name is Ashani Wheela. I am with the UNCCD and I am here to talk to you about soil organic carbon stocks, which is one of the sub indicators for reporting on Sustainable Development Goal 15.3. So today I will talk to you in four parts and it will refer to uh, what is the soil organic carbon stock, uh, sources, global sources of SOC stocks, um, the UNCCD default data for PRAISE 3, and interpretation of the default data. So to begin, what is soil organic carbon stock? So we have some soil. That soil has a volume, and in that volume we need to know how much gravel there is, we need to know how, many, how much the weight of the soil particles in that volume. There are also voids that are full of water and air and we need to know their weight as well. And there is the organic carbon in concentration that we need to know. So how much soil in this volume, the bulk density, the carbon concentration, and also water weight and gravel weight in order to work out what the soil organic carbon stock is. So in order to get to tons per hectare, we need all these other measures. So here's the calculation quickly. And for this little block of soil, it represents 60 tons per hectare. So soil organic carbon stock is a bit of a challenging indicator because it's what we call a compound variable. So it is derived from other measured variables and we don't directly measure it typically. So at a single point or horizon in a soil profile, we need to know the depth, the volume of, and the volume of soil, the weight of the soil, water, and the gravel for our bulk density, and we need the soil organic carbon concentration. Okay, sources of soil organic carbon data globally. So global soil organic carbon data is generally based on legacy data collected from sampling campaigns. Now these sampling campaigns were conducted for a variety of uses. So they will represent some land areas more than others. So agricultural lands will be overrepresented as compared to dry lands or arid lands. Uh, these surveys will have happened at differing times over the last up to 50 years. And so the global compilation of soil carbon observations um, will be biased in some way in space and in time. The soil organic carbon concentrations will have been measured with a variety of lab techniques and or with sensors and they have required harmonization and many groups have worked very hard on harmonizing this data. And they've also been recorded for a variety of depths. So this is, a compil this is a picture of the compilation of the global uh, carbon database that went into the creation of ISRIC's soil grids 250 meters. So this is global gridded information based on machine learning. So this, uh, the advantages of global data are that it is created with one consistent uh, modeling methodology. It is globally harmonized and the database has been standardized and there are over 170,000 profiles within it currently. Um, ISRIC World Information is the current custodian of this database. So soil organic carbon stock 0 to 30 for our purposes for UNCCD reporting um, is a compound product from several predictions within the soil grids environment. And they are the soil organic carbon concentration, gravel percentage, and bulk density, and for a given depth. So here's a picture of the global soil organic carbon stock, which is the default data for UNCCD reporting. In order to get ourselves an idea of how the soil organic carbon is changing through time, we also needed to prepare general trends in soil organic carbon based on land use change factors. So this is a tier one um, carbon accounting methodology for creation of national accounts via IPCC. We adapted this method 
um, to cover the period 2000 to 2015, specifically for land cover changes. So we're only reporting changes in stock where the land cover has changed in this time, not changes in stock within a land cover. And we've done it for a maximum of three changes in the 15 year period. Um, this is also done for specific climatic zones in the world. And when we combine these uh, land cover changes possible with the climatic zones, we come up with approximately, well, a bit more than 500 possible combinations of change factors. But many of these don't actually exist in practice, and the list is generally much shorter. So, in order to obtain these change factors, which uh, give us an idea of the proportion of change in a carbon stock over a given amount of time, uh, we collated them from the IPCC Good Practice Guidance, uh, 2006, uh, from literature values for examples that were not included in there, and for restoration cases where we move from what is generally considered a degraded type of land cover to one that is a uh, restored type of land cover. Um, we took the inverse of the degradation case, but we capped these at two times the initial soil organic carbon level. We also made some catastrophic loss scenarios. So this is where uh, land covers move from, uh, f say, a forestry cover into a bare lands cover and also for wetlands. Um, the value ranges for these change factors are from two, so twice the initial carbon stock level, 2.1, so a 90% loss level. Um, and this is applied over 20 year duration or the duration that the change is detected. And in general, the change factor, the direction of the trend on the carbon stock for our land cover change matrix um, is given here. So if it's blue, it's considered no change. If it's red, it's considered there is a loss. And if it's green, it's considered that there is a gain. And from this, we end up with 15 years of soil organic carbon stocks, which inside them include the change for each country involved. Soil organic carbon and the UNCCD default data for praise three. The default data package provided to countries for soil organic carbon contains maps of the carbon stocks. Here is an example for 2015. And it also contains maps of the estimated changes in carbon stocks, positive and negative, for this 2000-2015 period. It also contains tabular data, which gives the soil organic carbon average stocks per land use class. And this is only for pixels remaining in each land use class, not for pixels that change. And it gives a table that gives the carbon stock for uh, classes that, for pixels that change from one class to another, and gives the net change in area, the initial carbon stock and the final carbon stock, and a difference in tons over that period. There is also some graphical summaries that are provided within the summary documentation to countries, which simply display the same data within the tables, but give you know, an easier, quicker way to access the data and differences between the different classes. And here is one for changes in carbon stocks as per each land use class that has changed in that period and the proportion of area in each. Interpretation of UNCCD default data. How can you make sense of this data for your country? How can you nationalize your global data? So we're considering uh, using the default data at a country level. So what is important is that at a country level, um, the parties responsible for constructing their reporting uh, look at these maps, verify, authenticate them, the patterns of the soil again of carbon against their own known land cover patterns. And by this I mean, are the carbon stocks higher in the forests and in the wetlands and lower in the bare lands? Do the patterns make sense against what you know about your own country? And to ultimately decide if the default data is acceptable for the reporting process.
country level interpretation. So for considering the default data for soil organic carbon at a country level, um, it is important to look at the land cover changes and the change factors associated with the soil organic carbon and the land cover matrix. So one thing we need to look for is if there are false positives involved in um, SOC changes. An example that you may find when considering default data at a national level is the instance where soil organic carbon is considered not to change. Um, however, there may be other processes going on that can be considered degrading processes. For instance, moving from grassland to tree covered areas shouldn't have a difference for the soil organic carbon. However, it may involve woody encroachment onto grazing lands, again, a sign of losing agricultural productivity. These are the kind of details that can only be considered and only be interpreted at a country level. So here, for these very large tables, I would strongly encourage parties to consider what the land conversion is, the areas involved, and are they a significant area for your country or are they just a small area, and the percentage change in the carbon stocks. So don't worry so much about the absolute values. Have a look at the percentage change. So has half the carbon values in this particular land conversion been lost? And if so, and they are a significant area for your country, then if so, they may indeed represent a degradation that has been uh, found, spotted or revealed. However, they may not be. They may just be a small area. They may be a transition that is unimportant or occurring in an unimportant area. And they may not be as uh, significant as they may appear in these tables.